part of the NCI is the Center for Cancer Research. And that is the institute where I am working at. Now here in Bethesda, Maryland, we are located and there is a large research hospital. We're conducting clinical trials here with the aim to test new treatments and to advance the outcome of patients. Now, if we have a patient that we can treat on a clinical trial, we can actually provide a lot of assistance. The treatment is free, travel is free, and there are other benefits that patients may be eligible for. We do clinical trials, and the idea here is really to find new immune-based approaches to patients with early disease, intermediate, late-stage disease, and basically, you know, for those patients where there is no other treatment option. Obviously, these trials always change because we only have a certain number of patients, but those patients, again, that enroll here are treated. They do not require an insurance. We retreat them like any other cancer patients, and they would be eligible for the benefits that I just mentioned. On top of that, because of our specific interest in this disease, I'm always happy to provide a second opinion. We can certainly provide guidance to these patients. A clinical trial basically aims to improve and test new drugs or new treatment options or new diagnostics to improve the outcome of a patient. The important thing to remember is that we never know the result. It's a test because before we can actually treat a patient with a new drug, we first have to show in this test that it indeed is active, the patient benefits from this, and that he tolerates it. In other words, if we talk about chemotherapy, for instance, that the side effects are minimal. For patients with liver cancer, we have trials where we test immunotherapy using different immune checkpoint inhibitors, for patients with HCC, we have a study where we combine these immune checkpoint inhibitors with so-called local regional therapy or taste therapy. And we also have, I would call this even more experimental and advanced trials where we treat patients with a CAR T-cell approach, which is a specific approach where we use the patient's own T-cells, which are genetically engineered so they would recognize the tumor and then potentially kill it. We are still physicians and healthcare providers, so we want to make the patients feel as well as possible and have the patient live as long as possible. So whenever we see that our treatment works, and when we talk about a clinical trial, working is defined as no tumor progressions and the patient tolerates the treatment, we call this a success. Just like for many other cancers, there are various types of clinical trials which are being conducted. There are trials which aim to prevent cancer development. There are trials which aim to identify patients with cancer very early on. There are trials where we try to optimize the treatment using different currently available treatments, including local regional therapies or systemic treatments. There is also trials where we try to develop novel treatments. And this is something that we specifically do here at the clinical center at the NIH. So these are mainly clinical trials where we treat patients that really don't have any other treatment options. One of these options is a very innovative approach using an adoptive T-cell approach. In this case, we harvest from the patient's blood his own T cells, we take these T cells into the laboratory, we genetically engineer them so that these T cells can specifically recognize markers on the tumor. And then we infuse these cells back into the patient. The idea is that these cells, once they are infused, they go through the bloodstream and find the tumor and kill the tumor cells. An example for this is the glypecan 3 CAR T-cell approach that is currently being conducted here. If a patient is diagnosed with an HCC, the first step that we have to do after the diagnosis is we have to stage the patient. We have to 
answer the question, where is the tumor? How many tumors are there? How large are the tumors? Have they spread in the body? We also have to take into consideration, does the patient have any other underlying disease? How good is the liver function? All these factors are important to decide how to treat a patient. Once we have all these factors, we will decide whether this patient may benefit from a surgical approach or if an interventional radiologist can deliver a treatment which is directed straight into the liver or if the patient requires a systemic treatment which is basically delivered and works throughout the body even if the patient has metastasis. Obviously, there are different types of treatments. Some of them are treatments that use or aim to enhance immune responses. I mentioned this before, to kill tumor cells. But there are also targeted therapies. This is a question that can only be answered on individual cases. Which one would be the best? Number one is ask for information. You can get this information online. I mentioned this before. When you talk to your healthcare provider, be prepared. Make a list. Prepare your question that you want to ask. Don't be shy of asking for a second opinion. No healthcare provider will be offended if you ask somebody else for their opinion. This is standard. We do this all the time. If you receive a treatment offer, ask your provider, is this the best treatment offer? What would be the alternatives? And why is this best treatment offer? And you can also ask them about research and say, I would like to know something. Where would you see, could I get more information about research and what can be done? Now, last but not least, we know that a lot of the patients with liver cancer have difficulties reaching a care provider for various reasons. Even in those cases, I would urge you not to give up because I know that there are options for patients to receive treatments. Healthcare providers can direct you to institutions that can treat patients, even those patients that maybe currently don't have an insurance. So I think those are all important questions. The bottom line is try to be active and ask.